think Rohan on the chat just asked a question about like changing your life goals and I feel very compelled to say that it is a hundred percent okay. Just really question their motives before you follow your curiosities. That first paragraph, if that first paragraph doesn't capture my attention, I'm going to skim your SOP. Without using data to make a decision, you're just another person with an opinion. My name is Jackie Otto and I'm an Associate Director of, of Master's Admissions at the Tupper School. How do you solve a problem with no precedent? By mastering analytics, that is using data to make better business decisions. We believe that this combination of improved leadership skills in an analytical toolkit is what separates Tepper MBA from other MBA program graduates. And when we talk about leadership, we specifically mean leadership development. And leadership can be learned, so therefore it can be taught. And there are three steps to this leadership development, taking stock, developing your toolkit, and putting theory into practice. We view analytics as the transformation of data into information we can use to improve decision making. And Professor Mike Trick was known to say, without using data to make a decision, you're just another person with an opinion. We offer 13 concentrations and several tracks and dual degree options in the MBA program at Tupper. So no matter what concentration, track, or dual degree you choose, you will have a STEM MBA. You can see here that the tech industry is one of the largest where our students end up with consulting right next to it, followed by financial services, manufacturing, biopharma, and several others. We work with top employers, including Amazon, Deloitte, Google, McKinsey, Bain, PwC, Microsoft, AT Kearney, and many, many more. So for Tupper, you're gonna to wanna to have the strongest application possible to be considered for our merit scholarships. For the fall 2022 start in the MBA program, we will have several application deadlines to consider. Candidates should consider applying when they feel they have the strongest application. As the majority of Indians are coming from an engineering background with a 730 plus GMAT, how does the admissions committee perceive a mid-range GMAT coming from non-engineering background? So we look at everything. I know it certainly can feel competitive because it is. Think about the things that you have control over in your application. You can't change where you went to school or what you studied necessarily. The test score is a great place to spend some time and energy because you have influence over this. How would you address a weakness in the application? Please know that everyone coming to the MBA program does have opportunities for growth. And there's likely a student in the program that will have that as a strength that can share that with you and help you improve and grow. And in what scenarios would extra curriculars be irrelevant? That's a part of who you are and what you like to do. And that's important to us. So I feel like it should always be relevant um, in, in your application and, and you bringing your whole self to the Tepper program. What is it about Tepper that contributes to its good tech industry placements? With the MBA program, the, the technical skills, the analytics and the leadership components all together make our students very attractive. In terms of personality and outlook, do you see adding the most value to Tepper? Well, we're looking for students that want to be a leader. Um, we really expect students to be a leader at some point during the MBA program. How much work experience will be suitable for a candidate to get admission? For students that have less than two years of experience, I would say really think about why the MBA and why now. Five years seems to be about average, but again, there's a wide range of where students come from professionally, academically, and much more. I'm super excited to be bringing you guys representatives from UCR. I am Tamara Johnson and I am the Associate Director of Admissions and Recruitment. UCR is among the top 1% of universities worldwide. Half of the goods that enter into the United States actually flow right through Southern California. It makes it great for our faculty for research, our students for jobs and internships. Some of our values include inclusion, integrity, innovation, and collaboration. All of our programs are STEM designated for our international students. 3.42 average GPA, a 612 average GMAT. In the first year of your MBA, you are doing nine core business courses. It's nice that we have so many different electives you can choose from. Our Master of Finance is a 48 unit program. It is one academic year, so nine months. Master of Professional Accountancy, again, is a 48 unit one academic year, nine month program. I like to say these programs are kind of programs on steroids, get you in and get you out, get you into your career, get you starting to earn money. 
Our Master of Science in Business Analytics is a, a new program for us. Again, this is another one of those quick programs. We are very much into entrepreneurship. In fact, we have several programs that our students can be a part of. Our application is super easy. And for fall 2022, our application will open up sometime mid-October. Our priority deadline is December 15th. We only require one letter of recommendation. If you are an international student, we do require a TOEFL IELTS score, TOEFL 80, IELTS 7. If you take the GMAT or GRE, it does enhance your profile, not only for your application, but also potential for scholarships. We will look at every single student after you've been admitted into our program for a scholarship. For our MBA and professional MBA students, you do have this unique opportunity to be a teaching assistant. And you can do that in the second year of your MBA. Is UC Riverside open to students from an arts background who have been freelancing? We accept students from all backgrounds, no matter what your undergraduate is, your work experience, if you've been freelancing consulting, if you've been working for someone full time, we do not compare you with anyone else. How should an older candidate with a good GMAT and work experience but few extracurriculars weigh the decision of applying this year versus waiting another year and building out of extracurricular activities? Your work experience stands for itself. If you think about all the things that you've done probably in your work, why wait? You could almost put those into what you would get out of extracurricular that's the key points that separate applicants who get the interview. I would say someone that stands out is someone that's diverse. I think the essay is going to be where you're going to capture. I want to know who you are. I, I want to know what makes you maybe unique. That first paragraph is almost your most important paragraph because if that first paragraph doesn't capture my attention, I'm going to skim your um, SLP. One advice that I would give, don't be afraid. Just go ahead and apply. Go ahead and write that personal statement. Just tell the school about you. Just tell, tell them about your story. What makes UC Riverside a great school for people who are looking to change careers? Coming in, not knowing what exactly I wanted to pursue, and then being able to identify that, I give credit to our core classes. Um, bringing back our career development center. I love our career development center. <laughs> um, the, the center and the advisors would help students to kind of identify how the steps and the process to getting that job they want. I'm Sherry Hubert. I'm the Associate Dean of Admissions at Duke University's Fuqua School of Business. My name is Morgan Griffin. I'm an Associate Director of Admissions. We have a General Management MBA. We also have an MBA field of study that's included in the MBA, MSTEM track. It's really popular with our students. Uh, typically for international students, if they complete this track within Fuqua and then get a STEM designated career, instead of a one-year work authorization, they get a total of three years of our culture. So these are our four values that we believe in winning the right way. Um, and that means doing what's best for everybody involved. It's not always the bottom line. And more importantly, moving teams forward. So we also have Fuqua partners for people that might be coming with partners or spouses or even children. The Fuqua Partners Club, they'll uh, schedule outings or gatherings or provide resources um, to families, especially for those that might be moving overseas or a long distance through the Fuqua Client Consulting Practicum, um, which allows you to work on an actual project that has been brought forth by a company to Fuqua, get some hands-on consulting experience. The program for entrepreneurs allows people that if you have an idea um, for a new business or a product that you can get that experience as well and help helping to put together that plan and pitching it. In our career management center, they bring companies to campus to do recruiting. They're also in touch with those companies or boutique firms to help you um, with knowing when to go to recruit for those. Amazon, Apple, Google, Microsoft, Deloitte, McKinsey, BCG, JP Morgan and Chase, uh, Bain. We're usually seeing these companies year after year. The, the average base salary was $136,000 with an average signing bonus of $35,000. Um, so you will see on the right hand side, those are our application deadline dates. As far as academics, we're looking at your undergraduate degree. Did you challenge yourself? How did you perform in your academic career? And then looking at the standardized test scores as well. Your one-page resume, we want to understand the impact you've made in your career. When we're looking at your application, it's like peeling back an onion. And so here, we really want to get to know you as a person. And again, peeling back more of that onion, your essay, our iconic 
25 things about you essay. It is truly a list, usually limited to two pages, of 25 random things about you. Does a three-year full-time work internship as part of the CA course, uh, equivalent to the CPA, count for work experience? Because we really count the work experience that you get after you graduate from a four-year institution. You know, it's not that we won't consider any other additional types of work experience that you might have or internships. You know, you want to provide them so that we have a complete picture of your experience. But there can't necessarily be a substitute for having that full-time postgraduate experience as well. Can I apply to Duke without a TOEFL slash IL? I-E-L-T-S school. So we do not require those. You don't need to worry about submitting those at all. It actually slows down the admissions process if you do. So Test waiver option, GMAT, GRE, um, is an executive assessment available? And if so, what's the procedure to apply for the same? At this point in time, there is not. Either the GMAT, the, GR, or the GRE, or the EA, as you've um, identified there, Sarah. Is there any criteria to apply for the GATE or exchange programs? You know, there is a small application process, but just to make sure that you're serious, you're interested, you really know what you're getting into, but but not, you know, not any kind of extensive criteria that would prevent you because you've already gotten in, right? You've already gotten in, you're a student. We want to make sure that you're able to take advantage of all the different opportunities experiential opportunities that are available to you. What are the advantages of being an early applicant to the Food Corps program? You know, I would say the advantages are if you apply early, that means you're prepared, you're ready, you know exactly that PEQ is the place for you. And if you get admitted, you're saying to us, we're the one for you, you're the one for us. And so you're going to commit at that point. While most graduates from the U.S. schools end up working in the U.S., how easy or hard is it for a Food Corps grad to seek employment outside of the U.S.? A lower number of people may be getting employment outside of the U.S. abroad doesn't mean that it's harder. And that's why we, you know, we just see a trend more of students wanting, and especially as Sherry mentioned with the end STEM, with that three years of work authorization, if they're in a STEM designated job, more of them just choose to. So it's not that it's harder. I think the preference is more people prefer to work in the United States. How many schools did you apply to? So just again, quick show. So I see four, five, four. Six, uh, who would like to explain their process? Uh, so I applied to four schools and kind of my process was to have two serious contender schools, one stretch school and one safety net school. And I, I kind of thought through my professional aspirations with product management. So looked for programs that had some strengths in those areas and specifically in the tech and biotech spaces. And I want to know what resources you leverage to learn about the programs you applied to. I'll kind of talk about some of the resources that I used specifically also as an international student. And what I looked for initially were a lot of events that uh, a bunch of different MBA programs did in Mexico City. I think that helped me get an initial like lay of the land of, of the different options. Reaching out to alumni in, the, in, in your city or in your area, or even like cold calling if you don't have anybody close to you in Mexico City or, or wherever you, you're from. And then the second thing uh, was literally following the schools on social media, going to their YouTube channel and just like getting a feel of their brand, what they try to show, uh, what differentiates them. Alumni are there to help you out, especially if you're not sure of what firm or what organization you want to go work for. There's probably an alumnus or alumni who works there who you can ask questions about. Uh, what process did you use to make your final decision? I had a checklist that I kind of went down, you know, professional opportunities that I feel like I had equal opportunities to be successful at both programs. Yes. Really, at the time I was applying, it was pre-COVID, so I was fortunate enough to visit both programs in person, and that's really what gave me the biggest insights. It goes more to the qualitative part of how you feel in the city, how you feel in the school, and, 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 and how you connect the same way that you make friends or, or you meet uh, new people, right? One thing I do want to just take note of, make sure that you're applying to a school that gets you to where you want to end up being. You're investing a lot of money in yourself with all these programs. I think this is a brand that you carry with yourself for life. And you have to be very cognizant of the fact that you are going to be a part of this brand too. What do you hope the MBA program will do for your career? So for me, I, I was a career switcher. So I wanted to transfer out of the aviation industry into the biotech space. Um, specifically as a product manager. The MBA was an avenue for me to gain some skills that would apply to that profession, 
and give me kind of some inroads to, to the new industry that I wouldn't have had otherwise. So. I think Rohan on the chat just asked a question about like changing your life goals. And I feel very compelled to say that it is a hundred percent okay. And I in fact implore people to really question um, just really question their motives before you follow your curiosities. And I think that I have personally done that. And it is, it's stressful in that you have to consider different career paths, but I think it's ultimately rewarding in that you find yourself in a more authentic career. I think a mistake that many people make, myself included, is that when you're applying and you say in your essays where you wanna be in three years and five years, you're kind of standing at the precipice of something and you're making a claim for where you think you're gonna be and you don't even account for what two years will do for you. So I think just keep a little bit of buffer for where you think you're going to end up, because I think you could kind of surprise yourself. So. Talking to alumni, what kind of questions do you ask that you feel give best insights? And I... uh, the three things that I always go for, right? People, culture, and work. Ask about their day-to-day, -day, really understand what the work is like, what they're actually going to be doing. And is that something that you could see yourself doing? Don't just get to know one alumni at that firm. See if there's three, maybe four or five, however many, right? Try to get to know them all and see if it's a place where you could see yourself working. Like, is it conducive to your personality?